Hi guys and welcome to my brand new walkthrough of Disgaea 1 Complete. We've been waiting on this game coming out for about a week now. I actually wasn't sure when it was coming out. But well, here we are. So let's just jump right into this and see what's going on. His long reign came to an abrupt end as the news of his death spread throughout the dark land. Ambitious demons rose. Because I'm recording on PS4, I actually can't hear the audio myself. And thus began the age of turbulence and anarchy. Two years later. Well, I'm gonna assume that they're speaking right now. Normally, I wouldn't add clip scenes into the game, guys, but since it's just the start of the game, I will be doing that. But in the future, if you keep watching, I will be skipping it. Who said I was dead? I was just taking a nap. Anyways, why are all those weapons behind? I was having a hard time waking you. Are you sure you weren't trying to kill me instead? Oh, no. uh, I mean, yes. Oh, the new sprites are so crisp. It looks really good. <laughs> Whatever. So, what if you better have a good reason for waking me up? Oh, yeah. Big news. Your father, King Krachevskoy, in what? When? Two years ago. Guys, I'm trying to guess when Laharo and Etna are speaking since I can't hear it. So you're telling me that I've been sleeping? Yep. Yep. Why didn't you? Excuse me, but what do you think I've been doing? The Netherworld has gone to hell while you were. It's not my fault if some other demon steals the title of what? Have they forgotten whose title the? <laughs> How bold! <laughs> Your humble vassal Etna will accompany you. Not even gonna lie, this feels like a brand new game with these new sprites. Lahara looks so crisp. Episode, Episode 1 Prince of the Netherworld. Of the Netherworld. Oh my god, this is going back so far for me. Probably for a lot of you guys as well. Hmm, let's see now. Oh. oh, it feels good. It feels good. I can't jump though. So maybe they're not added in a jumping feature. Um, right, well. Dratty. <laughs> oh, there's a music shop guy in here. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, nothing else here. Let's keep going. Oh yeah, this is how I remember it. It's just a little small, uh, little small bit, little hub. So guys, basically let me go over how to play this game if you're brand new to it, and what does what. So I've played this guy for a long time, I've been on it for about 10 years plus now. Um, this is the data shop. This is where all your memories are going to go. So a collection of all the items in the game. And that's about it, really. You can check up on what items you've possessed in the game and stuff like that. Uh, this person here... Okay, so this is a tutorial girl. Um, you, don't, you don't really need to worry about her, she's not very useful. Dark Assembly. This is where you come when you want to pass a bill. 
So if you want more EXP from monsters, or if you want stronger monsters, or if you want to reincarnate a character back to level 1, um, this is where you come, the Dark Assembly. So this is just your normal armor shop and weapon shop. You actually get an, a rank with these people. And the higher your rank you go, the more interest items that will actually come into the shop and appear. So it's actually very useful to come to the item shop and armor shop and buy things. This is the Nether, um, Netherworld Hospital. This is where you come to heal yourself up. On the latest disguise, you get a score. I don't remember if you get a score now, though. Oh, you do, you do. You get prizes based on your health and SP recovered. So if you get treated, so we're up to health right now, and then you'll be able to click prize, claim prize, which will usually give you something. And it's usually really strong items that you usually can't get um, outside of that. Not until later in the game, anyway. So... This zombie's not very important. <laughs> he doesn't want to do anything. And this is the item world here, guys. I'll explain this one later on. The item world is really complicated. But I mean, if you want a quick, a quick explanation of what it does and what it is, basically, when you go into it, you put an item up, you jump inside that item, and then you fight monsters inside the item, and the item levels up and becomes stronger. So if you put in a sword, the sword will get more attack points, give more health, give more stats. The deeper you go into the item world to do that one item. Every item in this game has a world inside it that you can go into. There's a much more to it than that, but I'll explain that later. For now, let's go and get our first battle done. So we're going into the, into the tutorial area. Battle Basics 1. Okay guys, so like I said, I was going to skip through clip scenes. Uh, I don't put them up because I feel that it's a waste of time for you and me because you guys will be playing the game at the same time as me and I don't see the point in you want to watch them and then skip them on my end. So I'm going to skip through what she's saying. I don't really see a point really because I'm going to explain to you how to play anyway, so there's no point in watching her do it. Okay guys, so basics of battle, you've got a little base panel here and you've got to move your characters in and out of it. So you've got your basic main protagonists, Laharl and Etna, and then these are monsters that are, have been created, although they've been given to you and have hilarious names usually. They're just three basic monsters that you've been given. Now. You can move within these set squares where you want to move to. So I'm going to move Laharl up here next to Magnolia, this ghost. And we'll move Etna up next to this ghost as well. Now what you want to do is you want to input commands. And then you don't have to execute, but you can. If, if you press triangle and then go to execute, you'll execute Etna's move alone. But you can set up a series of moves that you would rather use instead. And then you can click Execute, and it'll actually let both of the characters attack. You see? So there we go. Now we're going to bring out Vodka. <laughs> and we'll bring out Dogma. So we're going to set up a double attack again. And execute again. So as you can see, these things called Prennies don't do very much damage. That was a mistake. You can press circle to bring your character back to the base panel once you've moved it if you made a mistake, and then move them out again. Nothing's set in stone until you do an action like that. And even then it's not really set in stone because you can just jump back again. It's more not set in stone until you've used them, actually used them that turn. So we'll end turn and then you'll execute the moves that you put in. So you can actually preset all of your character's moves and then press end turn and then they'll all execute and automatically end your turn. I don't do this often though. Just in case there's something else you might want to do. So this time we're going to execute the entire turn. attack the wrong person when you attack him. So this time we'll 
do a whole turn's worth of attacking. And then end turn. Okay, you actually died in one turn. <laughs> one attack. Never mind. Now, Etna's Spear can actually um, attack from one space away, so that's pretty good. And there we are. So, we got ourselves the Common Spear. Um, could have gotten all the way up to a thing called the Dolphin EX at 9 there. If there was a way to do it at the moment, but there's not. Okay guys, so that was Battle Basics 1, now we're going to go into Battle Basics 2. But first, I'm going to come out of there, and I'm going to go to the hospital and show you guys how this works now. So if we go to Get Treated, and then we can press Square to heal all. So you can heal all, or you can heal singly with X on them. So Square to heal all. Now, we haven't got any claim prize yet, there's no claim prize yet, but eventually you will get claim prize lit up once you've healed enough. So we can go to the weapon shop if you want to. I'm going to give you a little demonstration here. If you're wondering by the way guys, I'm not sure how the quality of this video is going to turn out. If it's bad quality, it's because I've not raised the quality on the Elgato HD60 high enough. I will adjust it for the next video. I'm just messing around with the settings at the moment. So we've got plenty of fists. And plenty of swords. Quite a lot of items. Um, let's see. So trying this on. So he's just got a common sword. So we can buy him a sword breaker. As you can see, there's different like kinds of sword breakers. It's because they have different um, abilities on them. On the right, you'll see Master Alchemist, Manager, Gladiator, Teacher, Gangster, stuff like that. They, they're very important, but we'll talk about them later on as well. So we'll buy him a sword breaker and just move on. It's always nice to buy your main character something new. So into Battle Basics number two. So in Battle Basics number two, guys, they're trying to teach you how to do throwing. So I'm going to teach you how to do throwing. So you set a character somewhere on the map. We'll just choose here. We use Etna. Now only humans can throw. Monsters can't throw. So you go left and lift a character. Then select throw. That's a new option that shows up. And you can throw them a set number of squares. So you throw them in front of the enemy. And then they can reach and attack that enemy if you want them to. Or you can pick up your opponent and throw them back into your teammates. And if you do that, then you'll be able to surround them with teammates that would never have been able to reach them in the first place. So you can gang up on them. And then we'll end our turn and everything will execute. So there you have it guys, that's all there is to throw in. So we're just going to wrap this battle up and finish them all off. Using everything I've told you about so far. And remember, if there isn't a force space, you can place someone, like Etna who uses a spear, behind the opponent. And she can attack from that space. Now the Harlot actually has a special move here. Yeah, special moves, they are um, certain moves that you get given depending on what weapon you're using. They also have actual specific moves that are given to each character as well. Um, they're both separate. So you could learn from a weapon tree certain special moves. 
and then you can learn from an actual character's personal tree that is set to them. Of course that's restricted to main characters only and not, bo not monster characters or human characters who have been created through the character creator. They have to rely on moves given by the weapons. So Prinnies have got quite a high move distance. You don't want to give them the satisfaction of being able to attack us too easily so just keep it in the behind somebody. And you can just move around Laharo independently. I can move quite far on this game. You'll notice that the Prinnies start to do more damage depending on the total damage and how many how many attacks are being done. It's because the more attacks that are done, the higher the damage starts to multiply. Okay, so again we're going to come out of that tutorial and we're going to go straight to the healer and just continue to heal the team. And hopefully get that claim prize lit up eventually. Now we're going to jump back in and we're going to go into Geo Effects next. Okay guys, so on this stage we're dealing with Geo Effects. Now Geo Effects, um, they're these little triangles here and they all have something attached to them. This is an experience plus 50% Geo Stone. This is a defense plus 50% Geo Stone. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure that they explode each other so if you attack let's see if there's a red one somewhere where's the red one is this the red one yeah okay well this is probably the red one um they're a little bit different from other sky games so what you want to do is you want to bring out a character and you want to make sure the one that says null is destroyed last because the null one will nullify the whole field and you won't be able to stack them. So I'm not sure if... Um, I'm not sure which one will get destroyed first, but let's just try. Give you a visual demonstration. So here we go. All the ones on blue are going to be destroyed. And now all of the ones there are going to be destroyed. So it's now taking out the whole thing all at once. And that's going to destroy the null one, which makes it do another thing. And this is stacking, creating a massive chain that will add to your bonus gauge. And it's also wiped out all the enemies on the map. As you can see, the bonus gauge is slowly increasing in the bottom corner. So we got all the way up to level 5 on that mission. So as you can see, Geos have a really, really important purpose. Okay guys, with Geos over and done with, um, that's the next area of the game opened up. So I'm going to call the walkthrough there for now. And let you guys get that sinking into your head, what I've been going on about. I uh, hope you enjoyed the very first part of this uh, series. I'm going to create a new part every single day. Um, remember to subscribe to the channel for future parts if you want to keep following me. And I'll see you guys in the future.